The sweeping and deadly attacks 24 hours ago was pagers going off with deadly force. Today, as hundreds gathered for funerals across Lebanon, walkie-talkies began detonating, killing many more. Our team just about 20 feet away from the second wave of explosions today, reporting on a funeral in Beirut. The wireless devices that have been given to members of Hezbollah blowing up by remote control. At least 20 people were killed today, more than 30 dead in the last 48 hours, thousands injured. Israel has not claimed responsibility, but tonight officials tell ABC News Israel is behind it. The stunning images right here, our team there at a funeral for victims of yesterday's blast, witnessing the second wave of blast, the chaos, the injured falling to the ground. Women and children watching from balconies and apartments above the street, wailing in a second round of deadly blasts. Some of these new explosions also triggering fires, a fleet of ambulances rushing to multiple scenes. Tonight, Martha Raddatz standing by with how these devices worked. And we begin with ABC's foreign correspondent, Marcus Moore, who witnessed the second wave firsthand in Beirut today. Tonight, the moment an explosion tears through a Beirut funeral. Our team there filming when just 20 feet away. The crowd panicking in the chaos, screaming. A man, bloody, falls to the ground. Injured in what we now know to be a new phase of coordinated, deadly attacks across Lebanon. We just heard a loud explosion. And I saw a man whose hands were gone. And then somebody pulled out a weapon. And uh, people scattered. Terror and confusion on the faces of children watching from the balcony of a nearby apartment, running inside. Just 24 hours ago, pagers loaded with explosives killed two Hezbollah militants, a nurse, and a 10-year-old boy, all buried today. And this time, handheld radios detonating in crowds, in shops, and in apartments. Lebanese officials saying solar energy equipment also targeted. At least 20 people killed today, more than 30 in the last 48 hours, and thousands injured. And, and David, Beirut and really much of the country is on, on edge tonight. And we have been hearing the sounds of uh, controlled detonations of suspected explosive devices going off all across the city this evening. But tonight, David, the major question is, how will Hezbollah respond? David. Marcus Moore, we're glad you and the crew are okay covering those funerals today. Thank you. Martha Raddatz is also in the region tonight with what she's learned now about the explosives and the trigger switches planted inside. Tonight, stunning new reporting on those unprecedented attacks. This scene at a grocery store. Watch as a pager explodes inside a shopping bag. The man goes down. Sources tell ABC News Israeli agents planted explosives in the pagers as well as a remote trigger switch to set off the blast. Those pagers sold to Hezbollah more than six months ago. And that's when analysts say Israel likely stepped in with what a U.S. official called a supply chain interdiction operation, meaning Israel tampered with a shipment of thousands of pagers headed to Lebanon. As little as one to two ounces of explosive material was implanted next to the battery, sources say. The pagers received a message at 3.30 Tuesday afternoon that triggered the blast. Israel hasn't commented on the attacks, but today, U.S. officials confirming to ABC News that Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin was among those notified by Israel that it was planning to carry out an operation against Hezbollah, but U.S. officials say they were unaware of the details. We were not involved uh, in yesterday's incidents or today's in, in any way. And David, while U.S. officials have repeatedly said the U.S. was not involved in the attacks in any way, they have not condemned the attacks either. David? Martha Raddatz, also live in the region tonight. Martha, thank you. To the news now back here at home tonight, the Federal Reserve with the big